this is going to be a little different. <laughs> and not just because of the lectern and my notes. I'm here, I think, because of a talk I gave early in the year on making the most on, of old age. That's not my subject today. It would hardly be very appropriate. I don't know when last I saw so many young people. You still exist. <laughs> In the talk, I presented old age as a time of opportunity. That might surprise some of you, but in reality, it is, if your health holds up. Opportunity to do the things that you hadn't had time to do previously. Opportunity to find new interests and pursuits. Opportunity to uh, enjoy the out doors more than you've ever been able to do before, to travel more, to be more venturesome, it can be the time of your life for, for a time. In striking contrast to that view is the way that young people see old age, at least according to a recent commentator in the Weekly Guardian who wrote, we now live in a youth-obsessed society that derives some sort of gain from mining the alleged horrors of aging, then described as all sag and no sagacity. <laughs> That's in the UK, of course. It's not like that here. <laughs> this rather graphically demonstrates the generation gap, which really has got wider and wider under the impacts of technology and pop culture. In former days, elders were treated with special respect as uh, the, the bearers of culture and as a source of wisdom. Not so now. Wisdom itself seems to be out of favor. I understand it's mentioned about 200 times in the Bible, but it doesn't get much mention in public discourse now. In former times, old people would instruct their grandchildren on customs and values. Certainly was very emphatically done in my boyhood. But now it's more likely that the grandchildren will be instructing them how to use the late, latest gadget. That is if they can be apprised away from their texting and computer games to be avail available to do it. We've undergone a huge social and behavioral change over the last few decades. And people of my generation have had quite a bit of difficulty coping with it. We just didn't feel fit in very well to the, what was happening. Perhaps um, we held back a bit, perhaps we sidelined ourselves a bit, but we didn't, I don't think we had that much say. We did occasionally, like uh, I remember myself doing it uh, on the long hair business in the 70s, but um, uh, on, on the whole, uh, we have not said that much, because we didn't really know what was going on. It's possible that we uh, said little to protect ourselves from being, being regarded as old hats, and who wants to be old hat? Looking back, however, I think we were remiss on not saying more. Now, I certainly think we should be saying more, because in fact, um, we are the only still generation still going that had uh, a lot of experience of life prior to the onset of consumerism and the technology explosion. And that experience that we had um, with the Great Depression, wartime, 
prolonged austerity, we learned how to survive. And that makes me think that perhaps we may have something to offer. Um, we've had a, a much broader life experience in some ways than the following generations. That doesn't make us any better or anything, it's just different. We've had that broader experience and the following generations perhaps um, have been so caught up in consumerism and, uh, and technology that it is difficult, and this is you, I'm sure, <laughs> difficult for you to see clearly beyond that. And uh, it's in that way, uh, it seems to me that, um, I, I mean, you grew up in a materialistic culture, and what you grow up in, to some extent, is what you are. It's, it's like me. I mean, uh, I grew up in a time when y y y there wasn't anything to buy, so I'm as mean now as I was back then. <laughs> uh, um, One of the consequences, however, of that may be that this, you, the following generations uh, are less able to seriously contemplate a much less consumer-driven way of life. So if we have, do have something to say, what is it? What is it that we can say that might help uh, to improve the possibility that uh, our grandchildren might have a life worth living in 30, 40 years' time. What can we say? What can I say? Well, I've got two things to say. Uh, two pleas, I think. One is slow down, and the other, get with us. Life as it is now is just too pressured, too busy, too noisy. There's too much hype and too much glorification of technology, too much doing and too little being, too little time for quiet reflection, for standing and staring, and too little of the precious quietude that we know is very good for our mental well-being. <laughs> it's all, I think, too much. And the other thing I would say, keep asking the question, how wisely are we living? Get real? Well, get real about climate change and get real about the impact of technology. There's surely little more that can be said about climate change. And in any case, what is being said appears to be making little significant difference to collective values and style of life. We're still mired in consumerism. We're still building houses that are bigger than we need and we're still not showing any sign of moving towards a, a, a simpler way of life. Meantime, extreme weather events go on, getting more frequent and more severe. We've yet to get real about climate change. As for technology, the benefits are huge, and I don't discount that in any way. But with the benefits come some quite serious threats. One is dependence, made manifest by the people who um, feel anxious when they haven't access to their communication tools, and more is going to be said about that. Dehumanization, that is, losing our humanity. I think there will be general agreement that the capacity for empathy is one of the better attributes of human nature. 
Some scientists are even suggesting that it is wired in us. That so it makes me think we're doing a lot of wasting. Empathy is the doorway to love and compassion. Empathy is at its peak in moments of personal intimacy, and it cannot thrive in the rapid soundbite world of technology. The idea that you can make a real friend on Facebook has no reality. And the, idea <laughs> and the idea that it can just makes life going go on being more and more superficial with the terrible threat that if this goes on in time, people are going to be treated as uh, pawns uh, uh, and to be used and exploited and ab abused. Uh, if there is some reality in that, and uh, I firmly believe that there is, I'd say, for goodness sake, do all that you can to protect your children from that sort of fate. Well, that's all pretty depressing stuff. Where in lies, <laughs> where in lies some hope? <laughs> Just as old age can be seen as a time of opportunity, and it, that's real. Take it from me. It's possible, likewise, that as the threat from the future looms larger, the present time can be seen as an opportunity for a strong community spirit to develop on the basis of concern for ourselves and for the environment. Could we all get caught up in it? Facing the undoubted threat the future holds, there's good reasons for the generations to come together in a way that has not been happening much in recent times, in the knowledge that we're all in the same boat, moving into a very uncertain future, and that we all need help facing it. Are there ways we can get together on it? Surely human ingenuity can devise some. I deliberately use that word, ingenuity. It applies in this place. For instance, is it fanciful to think that there could be a collective move to adopting a simpler way of life, or at least to start a move in that direction? And could we all people again become the instructors because we know more about that sort of life? And could a worshipful attitude towards this beautiful planet be collectively cultivated that would make any further spoiling of it something to be avoided, if possible, at all cost, including economic cost. Are these matters that we could get together on, young and old? Also, is it fanciful that this little country, that in the past gave remarkable lead to um, uh, social changes, could it do so again? Could it be a leader towards a simpler lifestyle and greater concern for the environment? And is it fanciful that we all people could collectively get our voices back and be strong advocates for the changes that are needed, in particular in that of moving from a life of wanting more and more and better and better to one of making do with less and less. Should we all once speak up and not go too gently into the night? And I conclude with a Churchill quote. Civilization will not last. Freedom will not survive. Peace will not be kept unless a large majority of mankind unite together to defend them and show themselves possessed of a constabulary power before which all destructive forces will stand back in awe. Thank you.